Howdy. Today is September the 12th, 2020. And today is video games day. So I figured today would be a good day to talk about video games. I was going to anyway, but I discovered this morning it was video games day. So hey, I ain't really nothing more appropriate than talking about video games. And I, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about my history of video, with video games, like my memories were video games came into my life and they've been there ever since. I love video games. I play a lot of video games more, more than I should because, you know, don't get much accomplished just playing video games. But the really good thing of it is, is they're fun and they're great time wasters. Great. But my earliest memory of video games is I remember when I was a kid, there was a guy that lived above us, just a couple years older than me. He had an Atari. And he had Pac-Man. I think Pac-Man was the only game I remember playing up there. But I do remember the game being up there. And I just, I was awestruck, awestruck with video games. You could interact with a television. It was amazing. You got to remember, I was born in the 70s, which means, you know, 70s, 80s. And 90s was my, or, you know, 80s and 90s was basically my youth. And after that, my cousins had an Atari as well. And they had, like, Circus Caper. uh, I think they had Pitfall and a few other ones. So I saw the games. And I was like, I love games. Uh... Then the first actual system, first actual game system we ever got was a Commodore 64. And that was off of my uncle. And uh, he was an extremely brilliant man. But he had an old Commodore 64 that he gave us. And that's, that's basically the first game system we ever owned was a Commodore 64. And I remember two games on it. Gorf, which was a Space Invaders clone, I would guess. And then the other one was a, uh, a text game. Pirate's Cave or Pirate's Cove. One of the two. But those were the two games I remember for that. Then the Nintendo era came along. And the first console that Dad actually bought for us was the Sega Master System. We didn't get a uh, Nintendo at that point. We got a Sega Master System. And we had four games for it. Let's see. Wait. Yeah, four games for it. We had Falcon 2.0, Choplifter, and Safari, uh, or Jungle Hunt. Was it Jungle Hunt? No, Safari and uh, Hang On was uh, the, the two-pack that was included in the, in the uh, Master System. I love the Master System. I think it's a great, great underrated system. It just never never gained attraction in the United States. But it's still a great system. You know, if you can find one, it's fairly good to have. Of course, today you can emulate a lot of stuff and a lot of systems. So you technically don't have to buy one. But, it's a cool looking black system anyway. Looks good on a shelf. Then, after the Sega Master System, we got a Nintendo. That is one of the, you know, if you're a child of the 80s, Nintendo was the way to go. Until you got to the the 16-bit era, which changed... You know, that's when the split of allegiances started happening. We had a Nintendo. And, let's see, I'm trying to remember the games I had for it. 
uh, I had Silent Service, which is a uh, submarine hunting game, which is a good game. It's not bad. It was a PC game, too. Uh, Silent Service. POW, which was a SNK game, which was a side-scrolling beat-em-up. Uh, let's see what else I had. I had... Um, MiG-29, which was, you know, you're flying around in a MiG. I had Stealth, uh, which was uh, another playing game. If you notice, there's a lot of military games. It's because technically the games weren't bought for us. They were bought for Dad. He bought stuff that he was interested in. We just happened to play with it. Uh, and... Most of what he bought us was military stuff because he was in the military, so therefore he wanted to play military games. So there's a lot of flight simulator stuff. POW, obviously, you know, wartime, all that good stuff. And, uh, let's see, what else did I have? I had uh, Bionic Commando, which I love that game, and I actually beat that one. Uh, Mario, Super Mario, Duck Hunt, and World Class Track Meet was part of our uh, games. What else did I have? Solar Jetman, which is still a great game. And uh, that was from Rare. And that was a really fun little game. Let's see. I'm trying to think. I, I think I had about 13 games for my original Nintendo system. Batman. I actually had Batman the game, which was a really good game. The soundtrack is still one of the better soundtracks for the 8-bit era period. Then, beyond the Super Nintendo, or beyond, beyond the Nintendo, we got a Super Nintendo, which my original Super Nintendo came with Mario World, then I had Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, the first Mortal Kombat for the Super Nintendo, I know people give it a lot of guff because it doesn't have blood in it, but actually it's a really good game. I don't need the blood and guts. I know that was like the big gimmick of it, but overall it was still a good fighting game. Then I had Street Fighter 2. It was a good game. I didn't have the turbo. It was just a regular Street Fighter 2. Then after that, let's see. We had a lightning storm. It was a kind of a cross mix thing where it was a lightning storm and the coal mines were draining too much power off a transformer. It blew the transformer and it killed our electronics. So the power company had to replace our electronics. So I got a new Super Nintendo, which came with The Legend of Zelda. One of the best. I would give it, if I was going to say my top, let's do this, the top five Nintendo games for me. This is personal, this is an opinion, you don't have to like it, but the top five Nintendo games is Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario Brothers 2, Donkey Kong Classics, I love, I love Donkey Kong, it's a good game, uh, Tetris, that is an infinitely, uh, an infinitely replayable game as Tetris. On any system, Tetris is a replayable game forever. It's just falling blocks at the end. I got two more to go. DuckTales. Capcom's DuckTales. Great game. Wonderful game. Fun to play. Then, I'm going to have to say beyond that one would be I know it's an LJN game, but I really like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So, my choices are Super Mario Bros. 3, Super Mario Bros. 2, Tetris. DuckTales. And Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I mean, I, there's a few other ones that could slide into that. You know, it's like opinions. They change constantly, so... It could be, you know, I like the G.I. Joe game. That was a good game. You know, just 
just those games are great. I, I like them, but you know, subject to change, of course. Well, the Super Nintendo, what I'm going to say is the top five games on it is Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. That is a must own. If you have a, if you have that system, play that game. Uh, of course, you know it being as old as it is, chances are you've played it by now. Super Mario World. I liked World 2, but I think World 1 was just... That was the first Super Nintendo game I ever saw. I was in 7th grade, and a friend of mine, John, brought his Super Nintendo to school because it was the last day of the year, and he plugged it up to the TV. I was awestruck watching it. It was uh, him fighting Bowser, and it was just... It was gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous game. And I had to have a Super Nintendo. That's before Dad bought us their Super Nintendo. But when he bought it, I was like, oh, that game is so good. Uh, Zelda. Mario World. Sim City. Uh, Act Razor. And then number five on that one would probably be Super Castlevania 4. I haven't beaten Super Castlevania 4. Which, you know. But... As far as gameplay and as far as graphics, it's a darn good game. Uh, never had a, I never had a Sega Genesis until after I was married, which I got married in '97. But we, I never had a Genesis till after I was married. And when I got married, right before I got married, I bought my PlayStation One. I had my PlayStation 1, Alien Trilogy, Resident Evil, Battle Arena Toshin Den was the three games I bought with my own money. That was the start of me buying systems was the PlayStation 1. Then I got married and the day after our, the day after we got married, we had to come back drive all the way to Eastern Kentucky, get our vehicle, drive all the way back down to Frankfurt area, Lawrenceburg to be exact. And we stopped off in Versailles at Kmart and we picked up Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I have been playing that game since we've bought it. I beat it multiple times. But as of as of this recording, that game is 20, 22 years old right now and we still have our original copy we still have our original game although it's got laser burn in it now which means you can't play it uh, I've got several digital copies of the game so it doesn't really hurt my feelings we still have the digital copy somewhere at the house but for 22 years I've been playing that game. That is my number one game of all time. It's just just for nostalgia reasons, just for the fact that it is a really good game. And it kicked off all the Metroidvania style games, which I don't understand why Konami jumped away from it and started doing the 3D thing like that was going to be their big money maker. I don't stick to what you're good at. You know, with a little bit of improv. Look, football games have been doing it for years. Madden's been doing it for years. Not terribly, you know, don't increase the how good the game is every year. Just do a little, just a little bump. A little bump up in something. Graphics or a little change in the engine or whatever. And sell it for full price. You make a fortune that way. Minimal work, maximum profit. Um... But Castlevania Symphony of the Night is my number one pick for the PlayStation. Just love the game. It's so, you know, for us, it's just a big nostalgia thing for us. Um, then, after, then my top five PlayStation games, Symphony of the Night, obviously. R4, Ridge Racer 4, love the game. Uh, Driver, I like driving games, so, Driver. I'm going to say uh, Alundra, which is a really good Zelda-type game. 
a lot sadder than Zelda, but it's a Zelda type game for the PlayStation. And Crash Bandicoot 2. Three was good, one was fine, two's the best one. Then when she moved down, after we got married, we went to a Toys R Us. Which for you don't know it, Toys R Us was a big toy store. Video games and toys and kids store, all that good stuff. And then we was up, for, uh, we were uh, going around the uh, video game section because, like I said, I love video games. So obviously that's like the first place I go look when I go in most stores is video games. We went to uh, the video game section and they had us. They had a Nintendo 64 set up. Uh, playing Ocarina of Time. Now, before I moved the wife down with me, Tanya, love you baby, she said she didn't want a Nintendo 64. But, when she went into Toys R Us and actually played the Nintendo 64, she looked at me and said, we gotta have this system. I was like, I've gotta have this game. So, I ended up buying a Nintendo 64. So we had a PlayStation and a Nintendo 64 at the same time. Top five Nintendo 64 games. Ocarina of Time, number one. Mario 64. WCW versus NWO Revenge. Great game. Pokemon Snap. And... Oh, the fifth one's going to be a hard one because... It's like cruising, uh, cruising world. It's a good racing game. It's all right, and it's arcadey, arcadey. So it's a pick up and play kind of game. And then after the '64, let's see. I'm trying to think of what system I had after that. Dreamcast. I bought a Dreamcast. While while it was fairly new, actually, I had a Dreamcast. I've had like. Three Dreamcasts up to this point, three or four. I love the Dreamcast. Really underrated system. More powerful, you know, than a lot of other systems. Had an okay library of games. The biggest failing of the Dreamcast was the simple, they didn't support it long enough. If they would have supported it, we would still have, well, we'd have a four way now with uh, Sony, Microsoft. Sega and Nintendo. Today, though, in 2020, the world is Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo. Nintendo does their own thing. They march to their own drums. And they're quite profitable at it. Microsoft, I like their systems. I, In fact, right now, the only consoles I have at the house is I have a an original Xbox. I have two original Xboxes at the house. I have an Xbox One, and then I have a busted up Xbox 360, which I need to buy another 360 at some point anyway. Uh, however, I think the next consoles I'm gonna get is the Super Nintendo Minis, a Nintendo Mini, PlayStation 3. I had a PlayStation 4. I'm probably going to wait till PlayStation 5 comes out before I buy another one of those. But, right now, I might have another PS3. A PS2, probably in the future. I like to rebuild up my game consoles. Even though I have a lot of that stuff digitally. You know, either for other systems or whatever. Sometimes it's good just to have the systems and the games physically there. What happens when the internet goes out? You play, you can play uh, something, just plop it in, play it. Um, I don't know whether I'm gonna, well, let's see. Dreamcast, then after the Dreamcast, I bought the uh, limited edition Halo Xbox, the original Xbox. I had the fat PS2, I think I have one fat PS2. I've had like three or four slim PS2s. 
uh, best games for the Xbox, the original Xbox, Halo, Gauntlet Dark Legacy, that's more of the wife's choice than mine, because she played the guitar out of that one, um, Knights of the Old Republic, number three, Knights of the Old Republic, uh, four, probably, um, Trying to think of games that I've played like a lot of times on that system. I like the compilation discs like uh, Midway's Arcade Classics, the Capcom Classics. Those are great. I'm trying to think of standalone games that that really. Project Gotham Racing, PGR is really good. So number four is Project Gotham. And Mortal Kombat Deception. Love the game. Uh, I don't understand why Shujinko gets the short end of the stick. He was a really interesting character. And I think they should have just... I think they could have kept that character in the series and kept going with it. i had been fine with that. Alright, PlayStation 2. God of War 1. God of War 2. Uh, Need for Speed Underground. Great game. Oh, I forgot one of my Xbox One, Grand Theft Auto, San Andreas. That is the best version of that game that you can get. A lot of people like the PC version or the updated version. It just, for some reason, it plays better on the Xbox One or the original Xbox than it does anything else. So, knock off uh, PGR and put Grand Theft Auto in its place. But when you do the whole uh, PS2... Grand Theft Auto. You can pick Vice City or Andreas for that one. Uh, Jack. Jack is really good. Jack and the Precursor Legacy is really good. I put that one on my list. So, God of War 1, God of War 2, Grand Theft Auto, Vice City. Uh, Jack. Still shows off like really good platforming. Uh, let's see, what would I pick as my other one? Of course, I know what it is. SmackDown vs. Raw 2006 wrestling game. Of course, why not? Love wrestling. As you know by my previous vlog, wrestling is one of the things that I'm interested in. So yes, I love the old wrestling games. GameCube. We bought a GameCube. I met a good friend when the launch of the GameCube came out. I was working at I was working at Walmart, and he was there to pick up his GameCube. He was one of 40 people who got one, and we became good friends after that. GameCube, love it. One of the better. I love that system. Still a great system. All right, top five games for it, real quick. Animal Crossing, Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, Wind Waker, Zelda. Of course, Zelda, you know, if it's a Nintendo system and Zelda's not on top of the list, there's something wrong. Uh, even the original Zelda for the Nintendo is a worthy purchase. Uh, WWE X8. WrestleMania 18. Great game. 19 was great too, so I can go either way. Then there was Day of Reckoning 1 and 2. But that one, and now I'm going to say uh, Mario, uh, Mario Kart Double Dash. How did I forget it? Smash Brothers. Before everybody yells at me, Smash Brothers. Dang good game. Melee was probably most people's favorite of the um, Smash Brothers. I know we got Brawl and the other one now, but... Honestly, that was... Around the GameCube era, which is, we got in the PS3 and the Xbox 360. I was more into the PS3 than I was the 360. But as far as game systems are concerned, both of them are good game systems. That's when everything started getting muddly, and you know, there's a few excuses, uh, a few exclusives for each system. But it ain't like it used to be. Now it's like. Oh, well, look at all this power. Look at all this stuff. Now it's like people don't care about power like they used to when it was the 16-bit wars. 
or the 32-bit wars. Now people care about exclusives. Like, what can I get on this system that I can't get on the other system? Sony is winning that game. Other than, I mean, like I said, Nintendo marches to the beat of their own drum. Nothing you can do about it. Uh, they kind of trump everybody because Nintendo products are worth a lot of money and they continue to be worth a lot of money. Like I said, it being National Video Games Day, I figured I'd share some of my video game memories. Uh, I'm absolutely certain we're going to revisit the topic again. Uh, I might do another, like other kinds of videos to to supplement this or or to do this, like do my top five list and show video of whatever the game is or something, me playing it. Um, if that's the kind of content you want to see, let me know. Uh, it's like the night rides and stuff. The wife said she liked the night ride where it's just me holding a camera and showing uh, showing the drive home from work. And uh, more likely, I'll continue doing that. I'll continue doing these vlogs. I'm going to try to do at least one a day so that everybody knows what's going on and my thoughts on random shit. If you don't want to know my thoughts, I don't know what to tell you. I, I can't help you there. Uh, I guess watch somebody else's channel. Be my guess. Uh, until next time, try to enjoy a pot roast.